All right, so section eight, here we go. Inequalities this time instead of equal twos. Yes, yeah, so what we have to do is we're concerned about where f of x will be greater than zero or less than zero, which means that we need to find x values that make f of x positive or x values that make f of x negative. And remember, when we talk about f of x, we're actually talking about that y-coordinate action. Yes. You know, where are we big or where are we little? f of x and y are synonymous, and then we look at... Uh, what x values has the graph above the x right, axis, right. which ones have From where have to it, where are you above? And which ones are below. And From so where to where. these say greater than and less than, but we could also end up with greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. And we'll just explore all of that uh, right now. Sounds like, great. At this moment. Let's do it. Example number one, let f of x equal all of this. Determine the real number values of x that cause f of x to be zero, positive, and negative. Hey. Can we do one of those sign chart things? I think a sign chart would be a fabulous idea. Yeah, I love sign charts. Okay, so what we care about with sign charts is where each part of this equals zero, right? That is correct, yes, 100% correct. So if at x plus 3 equals zero, that means that x equals... Uh, negative 3. Oh, ah, uh, awkward. Uh, wow, I got one right. No, that's not what was awkward. Oh. Oh, x equals negative 3. I forgot oh. the equal sign. Okay, oh, that was x squared awkward. plus 1 equals zero. But it doesn't. Right, because if you start to try to solve this, you subtract one over, you square root. Oh no, imaginary. We don't want we, we don't need those imaginary those. ones. Imaginaries so are taking a this breather. This is not going to cause us to have put anything in our sign chart. X minus 4, set that equal to 0, and you get X equals positive 4. So in our sign chart, which we're going to show you here in a second what a sign chart is, these are the two numbers that are important. Those are the ones. So how do you do a sign chart? So number? here's how I do a sign chart. Usually what I do is once I've got my factors like we've got right here, x plus yeah. 3, x squared plus 1, x minus I just line those up on the left on hand the left side. side. Yep. Okay, so x plus 3. Yep, there's 1. And, and then, then right underneath that. Yep. x squared plus 1. Yep. And, and then, then x, minus you know, I've, x minus 4. And I've done it where I've done x minus 4, x minus 4, or x minus 4 squared. Okay, let's but do squared. Squared is usually easier. And then I... Then I make like a little line on the bottom, to like on the on the bottom there. Yeah, little line. Keep going. All right. Excellent. Yep. And then I draw like a vertical line right for all of my zeros. Yes. Okay. So that's negative three. Yes. And yeah, because we set those things equal to zero, those were in fact zeros. That is and kind four. of important. Yeah. So there we go. So there's there's how my line chart, you know, sets itself up. And then and then I just like to pick numbers from the number line. And I don't care what the number is, I care about the S I G N of the number. The sign. The S-I-G-N. Why are you spelling it out? Because it's a sign. Okay. So what we do is we pick number a number that's in between negative 3 and 4. And a number that's less than 3. And a number that's less than and 3. And a number greater than 4. Right. If you have this situation, a 0 would be probably easiest to plug oh, man. in. Oh, man. Every time. And then otherwise, it doesn't really matter what you pick. That but is the correct. smaller, the better, usually. Usually, the closer to those zeros, the easier it is. And again, we're just interested in sign, not exact numbers. So if I plug in a negative 4 or something bigger than negative 4 right here in for x plus 3, I get something a negative. negative. Yes. If I plug in 0 here, 0 plus 3, you I get, get a positive. positive. If I plug in 5, I get a positive. Yes. And then, so we're going to do this on each level right. of our chart. So now I plug in negative 4 here. And if you think about it at the beginning, <clears throat> anything I plug into x squared is going to become positive and then add 1. So all right. of these should be positive. They'll all be positive. And when you punch, if you're going to double check and punch this into your calculator, for heaven's sake, please put a parenthesis, negative 4, close squared. parenthesis, yeah. square it, yeah. or you'll get the wrong thing. Yeah. And then here, this is kind of a similar thing, right? If I plug in the negative 4 or the 0 or the 5, no matter what I get here, I'm going to square it. That's correct. So, so all of these should be positive plus as well. And plus and plus. Now, here's what's really happening. What we're doing is we're saying, hey, we've got a, a number that's negative. And if we looked in this very first column here, we've got a number that's negative times a number that's positive times a number that's positive. What's that going to give that's us? That's going to give us a negative number. Right. I might want to... Extend this line down a little. And, and then if you look in the middle part where you've got, you know, all those pluses, positive, that's positive, a positive, positive number times a positive number times a positive number. And then positive, And then positive, the same positive. thing on here. So, so if we want to know where these numbers are zero, positive, and negative, we just found that out. Because right. we we're not interested in the exact value. No. We're, we're interested just... in the sign. Yes. Yeah. So at negative three, it's zero. At four, it's zero. Because we found the zeros up right. here. So if we're listing out where all it's zero, there's two places that happens at x equals negative three and four. Right. And that's the only place it equals zero. If we are looking for positive, that's where our positives are. 
And this is a good place to practice your interval notation. Right, because we're going from here at negative 3 is 0 positive. 0 is not positive. It's not zero positive is or zero. negative. So right. from negative 3 until this line where we have another 0, okay, that's one interval that's positive. And then from 4, we would go on to infinity. Right. Because there's nothing that stops it over here. That Oops. is correct. So that's our positive interval. Not even that little ticky mark you just put yeah, can stop it. on accident. And, and then negative. That's all the places where you get the negative sign on the bottom. Wait. And and let me just tell you how important a sign chart is. Over here. You're going to use it all the time in calculus. Yeah. It's like... It's, the, it's around. The, this, yeah. this is something to try to understand. Yeah. So we just said, okay, it's negative over here from negative infinity until we got to this number, which was negative 3. And then we said, well, it's positive from negative 3 to 4. It's positive from 4 to infinity. We could check this on a calculator pretty easily by sticking the original function in. And what should happen here is this is, what, a fifth degree polynomial? Fifth degree. And it's bouncing at 4 because of that squared, which is why we end up with it being 0 at 4, but it be not switching from positive right. to negative. Because we've got like a... We've got a whole bounce situation. Yeah, we've happening. got like a this kind of situation ish going on, something like that. And right. So you can tell, okay, well, that's where it's zero, that's where it's zero, and then it's positive up here, negative down here. Perfect. Yeah.